Imagine a place in the ocean where life cannot survive. No fish, no coral, no plankton, only silence beneath the waves. These aren't fantasy worlds. They are real. They are called dead zones, vast stretches of water where oxygen levels have dropped so low that most marine life either flees or dies, and they're growing. Welcome to ThinkDart. Today, we dive deep into Earth's dead zones, explore what's turning vibrant seas into underwater deserts, and uncover the shocking truths scientists are only now discovering. What exactly is a dead zone? A dead zone is an area in a lake or ocean where dissolved oxygen drops too low to support most marine life. Oxygen levels below about 2 mg L are dangerous. Below 0.5 mJ L, nearly all life struggles or dies. Causes When nutrient pollution floods the water with nitrogen and phosphorus from farms, sewage, rivers, algae blooms erupt. When that algae dies, bacteria decompose it and decomposition consumes oxygen. This depletes the oxygen further. So dead zones, oxygen collapse plus life collapse. How dead zones form and why they're growing. There are natural dead zones, sure, seasonal, small. But human activity is turning them into a global crisis. Here are the forces fueling the spread. Excess nutrients from fertilizers, livestock waste, stormwater, urban sewage. Warmer waters warm up the ocean so they hold less oxygen and also strengthen stratification, layers, so oxygen from the surface doesn't mix downward. Climate change, altering currents and rainfall patterns leads to more runoff and less mixing in the ocean. Dead zones are not static. They fluctuate, expand, shrink, depending on season, weather, human management. But overall, more zones, bigger zones, longer-lasting zones. The world's worst dead zones. Let's zoom into some of the worst offenders. Gulf of Mexico, fed by Mississippi River runoff. In summer, nutrient loads create a massive low oxygen patch. Baltic Sea, chronic hypoxia in bottom waters. Over decades, oxygen deficiency has killed off bottom dwellers and disrupted marine ecosystems. Gulf of Oman, surface area among the largest of these zones. Scientists believe a combo of natural warming, nutrient inflow, and changing monsoon patterns worsens it. In total, there are over 400 to 530 dead zones globally, covering areas sometimes as large as a country. Life in the void, survivors in amp, shifts. Dead zones look lifeless, but they still host life. Not the kind most of us know, Bacteria and microbes that can survive with almost no oxygen are thriving. Some use sulfate or nitrate instead of oxygen to breathe. Jellyfish often survive and even expand in dead zones because they can tolerate low oxygen and there's less competition. Bloom collapse events release toxins, depleting oxygen further and triggering chain reactions across ecosystems. These shifts mean food webs break down. Fish migrate or perish. Economies dependent on fishing suffer. Coral reefs, seagrass beds, shellfish, often the first to go. Why this matters to humans. It's not just ocean life at stake. Dead zones affect people. Fisheries lose income. Commercial catch drops when fish avoid or die in hypoxic zones. Tourism suffers. Dead beaches, fish kills, bad smell, bad visuals. Coastal communities depend on seafood as food and amp, income. Dead zones hit them hardest. Climate feedbacks. Less oxygen means less capacity to store carbon, more greenhouse gas emissions during decay processes. Are there solutions? Hope in the deep, but there is reason to believe we can turn back or at least slow this trend. Better farm practices, reduce fertilizer runoff, plant buffer zones, use organic farming improved wastewater treatment, removing nitrogen and phosphorus before it reaches rivers, seas. Regulation and AMP policy laws to restrict agricultural runoff, international agreements. Restoration efforts, replanting mangroves, restoring wetlands that naturally filter nutrients. Public awareness, and AMP science, monitoring dead zone growth using satellites, sensors, 
published research. Examples. The Black Sea dead zone improved when fertilizer use dropped dramatically in some countries. Monitoring ANAM, regulation also helped parts of Chesapeake Bay. The future, could oceans go too dead? Scientists warn of ocean deoxygenation. Open ocean oxygen minimum zones, OMZs, are expanding, which could turn deeper parts of the ocean into mere barren voids. Models predict oxygen in many coastal waters will decline further by 7 to 10% or more by 2100 if we don't stop warming and nutrient overuse. Worst case, mass die-offs of species that can't move or adapt, collapse of local fisheries, shifts in global climate carbon cycles. We often look up at the stars wondering what mysteries the universe holds. But some of the most urgent mysteries and threats are right under the waves. Dead zones creeping across our oceans, silencing life in places we once thought full of movement and color. What do you think? Could future generations restore the sea's oxygen? Will policy, science, and people act fast enough? Leave your thoughts below. And if stories like this move you, subscribe to ThinkDart for more deep dives into the planet's hidden crises and wonders.